Good day, fam. How's everybody doing out there? All my, uh, my natural, uh, people. <laughs> my Takons, my indigenous aboriginals. Yeah. My, uh, so-called Native Americans of the copper color races. That was, uh, found here, right? By the European. Right in these lands called the Americas, right? And the, uh, uh, surrounding joining islands, right? My, uh, talk tongue, right? Right? Talk down. Ah, talk down. Right? How's it going, fam? I hope everybody's doing well. It's a great morning thus far. I hope, you know, your day is starting up well. I just thought I'd uh, come back to you guys, right? with this part two <clears throat> in this uh Nephilim Neanderthal New Man series. Alright. This one right here is for the tribe. All the tribes. The twelve tribes that is. Um Yeah man, we're gonna get into it. Alright. Just wanna uh open this up. Giving all thanks and praises to the Most High for bringing us closer, you know, whether it's uh, through social or, you know, just conscious awareness to the whole awakening across the plain to all our indigenous melanated fam. All right. All of those waking up to this uh, calling. And if you're rocking with the creator, if you're on the side with the Most High then yeah, man, you know, this is for you too, all right? No matter who you are, no matter where you are, no matter uh, what you look like, this is just for the most high, all right? We do this for the, uh, for the return of his children, all right? So um, we're going to kick this series off, man, or this part two, I should say, by uh, tackling head-on subjects, all right? So, um, I want to start here with everybody. And, um, yeah, we're going to be digging on this melting pot, right? And, um, we're just going to get a better understanding on what's going on with this melting pot and its reference and, uh, metaphorical, you know, value and usage with America and the Americas, period. All right? So, uh, this is melting pot, and it says that, um, the melting pot is a metaphor for a heterogeneous society becoming more homogeneous. The different elements melting together into a harmonious whole with a common culture or vice versa for a homogeneous society becoming more heterogeneous through the influx of foreign elements with different cultural background with a potential creation of disharmony with the previous culture. All right, so they're forcing the heterogeneous society, right? Now, to be a heterogeneous is to be a different society. So, this society is made up of different genetics, different genes, all right? A bunch of different genes um, plugged into one. This is how the society ran, right? So to be a multicultural society is to be a heterogeneous society, all right? So they're saying that they wanted to introduce a multicultural or heterogeneous society into becoming more of a homogeneous or 
a more all one society. All right. So see heterogeneous, right? We'll we'll dig on you real quick. See? It means of different kinds, right? Other, another, different, right? Plus kind, right? So we're just talking about different kinds. Okay? And then homogeneous, right? Being of the same race, family, or kind, right? Same kind, right? So this is what we're digging on. The melting pot is a metaphor for a heterogeneous society becoming more homogeneous, okay? And their idea is that the different elements melting together into a harmonious, <clears throat> excuse me, excuse me, fam. The different elements melting together into a harmonious whole with a common culture or vice versa, right? It says for a homogeneous society becoming more heterogeneous. So that means the culture that was already one, right, of one race, that was already uh, stuck together, right, is starting to become more heterogeneous, right, through the introduction of the heterogeneous. So the more you dump these multicultural uh, influences into the homogeneous culture, which is of the same, the homogeneous culture becomes more heterogeneous and the heterogeneous culture starts to become more homogeneous. It says through the influx of foreign elements with different cultural background with a potential creation of disharmony with the previous culture. All right, so what we're talking about is that basically these European colonists, right, these foreigners decided they wanted to bring all of their different aspects and cultures into your land and to mix it with you, all right, to assimilate. And what ends up happening is that the natural or the native, right? As we were reading here, right? The copper color races, right? Who were here, right? Already by the European, or I mean, they were found here by the European, right? So when they saw you, they figured they would assimilate into your culture. And in turn, that would create a disharmony with your culture, all right? So they broke it apart by introducing their multifaceted ways, all right? It says, historically, it is often used to describe the assimilation of immigrants to the United States. The melting together metaphor was in use by the 1780s. So we know what was going on by the 1780s because this dictionary was in 1828. All right, so we're talking about colonialism, y'all. All right, this melting pot, right? It says the exact term melting pot came into general usage in the United States after it was used as a metaphor describing a fusion of nationalities, cultures, and ethnicity, right? In 1908, the play of the same name. All right. So it says uh, origins of the term. In the 18th and 19th centuries, the metaphor of a crucible or a smelting pot was used to describe the fusion of different nationalities, ethnicities, and cultures. 
It was used together in concepts of the United States as an ideal republic in a city upon a hill or new promised land. All right. Now, if you'll notice, every time um, they mention anything to the Americas, right, they always put the new in front. All right. But what we need to remember is that if there were native people, right, a native people of America, right, who were the autochtons, right, copper color races, right, shout out to my fan, right, and um, if they were already here in America, this is nothing new. Nothing about this land is new, and it's promised already to the natives, all right, to the Autochton people, all right, it's already promised to them, so there's nothing new about it. So what we need to pay attention is to this, all right, it says it was a metaphor I, I idolized, right? It was a metaphor for the idolized process of immigration and colonialization by which different nationalities, cultures, and races, right? A term that can encompass nationality, ethnicity, and race proper were to blend into a new virtuous community. And it was connected to utopian visions, right? Of the emergence of an American new man. All right, new man. Now that should ring some bells to you, especially dealing with the Christianity doctrine, right? When we're talking about this New Testament, right? When we're talking about religion, right? When we're talking about dumb diverses, right? They wanted to develop and emerge as the new man right of the americas <clears throat> because remember we're talking about you the copper color race being the native american all right who were found here by the europeans right but now applied to the descendants of europeans born in america so you see how we're right on time with that the emergence of an American new man, right? <clears throat> so they wanted to become a new man, right? Let me go to new man. It says the new man is a utopian concept that involves the creation of a new ideal human being or citizen replacing the unideal human beings or citizens. I mean, y'all got to see this for what this is, is, man, right? It says the meaning of a new man has widely varied and various alternatives have been suggested by a variety of religions, right? And political ideologies, all right? Christian new man, right? The doctrines of Paul, right? The apostle speak of Adam both as the fallen old Adam and a new Adam. So that's basically what, you know, I wanted to bring to y'all attention, man, when we're dealing with this new man, right? This new man gospel, right? This new man doctrine, right? To replace the old Adam, right? Because the old Adam has fallen, right? And this is the doctrine of who? The Apostle Paul, right? Right, so this is the New Testament, right? As uh, Teach Me To Be Priestly was saying, right? Like, they, they hit us with the ecclesiastical law, right? And they shut us down based off their doctrine, right? So, let's 
Let's put it together, right? New man. Okay? So again, there was nothing new to the men and women who were already here of the copper color races, right? Of America, right? The American who were already here originally, right? But we were found here by some Europeans, right? And then they took our name, became a new man, and their descendants are now called Americans, right? Right? But they keep wanting to throw emphasis on the new. <clears throat> it says that um, the first use in American literature of the concept of immigrants melting into the receiving culture are found in the writings of J. Hector St. John de Creva Cor Courier, or whatever his name is, in his letters from an, ancient, from an American farmer, right, in 1782. It says, um, he writes in response to his own question, what then is the American, this new man? that the American is one who leaving behind him, right, all his ancient prejudiced manners, right, receives new ones from the mode of life that he has embraced. It says the government he obeys and the new rank that he holds. He becomes an American by receiving, by being received, right? It says that, um, right, he becomes a new American by, um, by being received in the broad lap of our great alma mater. Right? It says, here individuals of all nations are melted into a new race of men, right? Whose labors and posterity will one day cause great changes in the world. Alright, so their purpose is to take you from your ancient ways, right? And put you into some new ones. Which obeys the government, right? And the new rank that you that they hold right so this is why everybody comes to america right this blending in right so um yeah man we're gonna um touch on something right we're talking about the fallen of the old Adam, right? And we're talking about, <clears throat> excuse me, fam. <clears throat> we're talking about a new Adam, right? Now, remember in part one, we were digging on the Neanderthal, right? And it said that the Neanderthal was an extinct type of hominin, right? from the Neander Valley, right? It says his name literally means new man. Y'all see that, right? The new man. So, I mean, this is their introduction right here, fam, under the Christian doctrine, all right? And their whole focus was to cause a disharmony with the previous culture, right? Which was you. The copper color races that were already found here in America. The original, right? I talked to them, right? 
So this new man, right, this Neanderthal from the Neander Valley, decided that he was going to bring his heterogeneous society, right, and to come mix it with your homogeneous society, which is why they all agreed to take your name away from you. Right? This new man, right? So, um, Neander Valley, right? It says, uh, uh, let's check it out, right? It says that it's in Germany. Right? It's in Germany. It's a German state. <clears throat> Alright, so this is where this is at. So this uh I don't know, fam, this German's been at work for a long time. Alright. <laughs> In all ways, whether we want to talk about <clears throat> these Ashkenaz Jews, you know. Whether we want to talk about Nazis, whether we want to talk about the whole game, right? So, uh, when we go to images, this is what we get, right? This new man. Now, we're just looking at images for, uh, Neander Valley, and this is what we're getting. So I just want the fan to get a picture of what we're talking about, all right? And again, you can come and look this up for yourself, you know? <clears throat> it's very easy. So they say that this new man came from this valley, right? And he brought his culture to mix with yours, right? This is crucible, right? Now, um, it says a crucible is a container that can withstand very high temperatures and is used for metal, glass, and pigment production as well as a number of modern laboratory processes, while crucibles historically were usually made from clay, they can be made from any material that withstands temperatures high enough to melt or otherwise alter its contents. It told you it was usually made from clay, right? I mean, come on, fam, right? We see this, usually made from clay. Right? And it also says that it is a pigment production, right? Now, when we were talking about the new man, right? It says it was the metaphor of a crucible or a smelting pot, right? That was used to describe the fusion of different nationalities, ethnicities, and cultures, right? And we go to this crucible, right? And that's exactly what they give us. And then on top of that, it tells us that crucibles historically, so historically, they were usually made from clay, right? Just like the copper color races, right? Or historically known as the original autochton American, which happens, you know, to be the natural indigenous person, right? So they're telling us that um, now they can be made from any material that withstands temperatures high enough to melt or otherwise alter its contents, right? And it says here that now your name, American, is applied to the descendants of Europeans 
born in America. Right? This crucible, right? Says the form of crucibles have varied through time with designs reflecting the process for which they are used as well as regional variation. Right? It says the earliest crucible forms derives from the 6th, 5th millennium BC in Eastern Europe and Iran. Right? says crucibles used for copper smelting were generally wide shallow vessels made from clay that lacks refractory properties which is similar to the types of clay used in other ceramics of the time all right copper smelting but i mean i'm gonna just leave it right there fam because look once again we're talking about what all right copper colored races come on I know y'all waving with me, right? We're talking about the creation of disharmony with the previous culture, right? It says historically. I mean, come on. Historically. Let me get that back, right? Let me leave it like that. Y'all see this, man? Christian new man, right? This new man, this Neanderthal, when we go and look at the Neander Valley, this is what we're getting, right? Right? And then we're digging on this copper smelting, right? This crucible, right? This pigment production, right? This container that can withstand very high temperatures. Now, if it's naturally made from the clay and it can withstand high temperatures, that sounds like melanin right and the sun right being copper colored you were able to take in the sun right y'all with me so um let's carry on right now uh it says that the neanderthal is in a, an extinct kind of hominin right so let's dig on the word hominin, right? It says great eight. It says the hominid, right? Or the hominidate, whose members are known as great apes or hominins, are a, tox, a taxonomic family of primates, right? That includes seven extant species and four general right and it gives you the uh breakdown right here right so there's seven of these things right great apes or hominins right it now this extinct hominin also happens to be this new man. Keep that in mind, all right? So um, it says the hominidae, right? Whose members are known as great apes or hominins are a taxonomy, right? Family or primates that includes the seven extinct species, right? We just read that, right? It says, um, the, the pan, right? The common chimpanzee and the bonobo, right? It says, and homo, the human. And though not extant, the near human ancestors, relatives. Bam. Right? So they're telling you that this hominin, hominins, right, means this great ape, right? It says several revisions in classifying the great apes have caused the use of the term hominin. Alright? So this is relation into uh, apes. I mean, look, right? You see homie here, right? Right. It says 
that uh, restrictive meaning. Oh, I'm sorry. It says its original meaning referred only to humans, right? And their closest non-extant relatives. It says that restrictive meaning has now been largely assumed by the term hominin, right? Which comprises all members of the human clad after the split from chimpanzees. I mean, what the hell are they talking about, fam? Right? Now, if you remember in part two, I mean, in part one, I'm sorry, this is part two. But in part one, they said that um, their species, right, trek out of Africa, right? After the mixing. And um, if you go back, you'll hear me ask what mixing took place right so um here you have them telling you that um this hominin term refers or compromises actually all members of the so-called human clad after the split from the chimpanzee all right and then keep in mind that the neanderthal was said to be an extinct hominin right that's how we got here, right? So they're saying that the split from the chimpanzee, right? The pan, right? So um, kept it going, right? The hominin, uh, the hominin, right? It says that uh, it's part of the three extinct genres right at the bottom right right and it says that um it used to be a part of this right the australopithecina right the australopithecina right and the panina with its one genus pan right the chimpanzee see the evolutionary tree below right it says members of the human clad that is the hominina or the hominini yeah nina right including homo and those species of the australopithecines right that arose after the split from the chimpanzees are called hominians it says not all hominians are directly related to the emergence of the early homo. This is a modern cladogram. <laughs> all right, so uh, keep this in mind, fam, because we're going to come back on that, all right? Once again, um, hope everybody's doing well. I'm excited to bring this to y'all. Um, I hope everybody's refreshed, you know what I mean? If not, you can go ahead and uh, do so. Go get you uh, some refreshments real quick. You can hit pause and come back to the joint, all right? Anyways, uh, I'm going to carry on, fam. This is the common chimpanzee, right? Now it says the common chimpanzee is also known as the pantroglodyte, right? also known as the robust chimpanzee. It is a species of the great ape. All right, it says evidence from fossils and DNA sequencing shows both species of chimpanzees are the sister group to the modern human lineage. All right, it's pantroglodytes, right? Troglodytes, right? It says that that troglodyte is known to be the chimp. And that's his name, right? Keep in mind, we're dealing with this extinct hominin, right? This Neanderthal being, right? From the Neander Valley, right? That means new man, right? And we're dealing with um, the melting pot, right? 
which is the creation of the disharmony with the previous culture, right? To create their new man as the American, right? But you are the American, my people, of the cop color races, right? Right? Where they get the copper smelting, right? Used for their crucibles, right? So this pan, this pan, uh, troglodyte, right? Chimpanzee. This research, right? And it brought me to the quarry, right? Or what most of us know as the horite. Right? Horite equals K dweller, right? The inhabitants of Mount Seir, right? The inhabitants of Edom, right? Now we know Edom is Rome, right? And Rome is the Catholic Church, right? So, uh, yeah, it says Cori, right? K dweller or troglodyte, right? A Korite or Aboriginal. Indomain, right? Horns or Horites, right? So we're talking about these New Testament people, right? Once again, we're talking about Christians, right? We're talking about Paul, right? Because Paul is from Edomia, right? That's where Paul is from, right? It says Corey is from the age 2356. So I dug on the H2356, right? And it gave me core, right? And it says that uh, core means hole or cave, right? And when we go back, right? It said troglodyte. Right? These are troglodytes. Right? I mean, do y'all see that? Right? Troglodytes. Right? Or cave dweller. Right? Pan troglodytes, right? Let's see. Can we get Let's see real quick? If we can You know what? I was gonna try to see something, but I don't wanna take us off uh off focus, fam. However, I will say we know that these troglodytes, right? This is their region. Now, uh, where is this? Right? Isn't this Africa? Right? So, in part one, when they said they trekked out of Africa, their species, right? You can see the picture, right? It's pretty big. So, um, yeah, fam. We're talking about troglodytes and cave dwellers, right? We're talking about chimps, right? The chimps being uh, troglodytes, right? This Neanderthal new man being a uh, hominin, right? And when we look up the Neander Valley, we get caves, right? And, and, and of the sorts, right? See, cave map. Right? We're talking about caves, right? So, um, Horite, right? Which is the Aboriginal tribe that Edom decided to mix in with, right? It's, which is how he became Edom, Esau that is, right? And they're telling you that it means troglodyte. Oh, my bad. Troglodyte, right, or cave dweller, 
all right and we have the scientific name of the common chimpanzee which is pan troglodytes right so uh this is the etymology right on troglodyte we got cave dweller right from 1515 1550s troglodyte right cave dweller or cave man right now we getting specific right cave man in reference to tribes identified as living in various places by ancient writers right it says on the african coast right it says literally one who creeps into holes right hole mouse hole right it says to gnaw right nibble or munch right it says go in right dive in right now let's dig on this. It says see trout. When we go to trout, right? Trout is a trout, right? A kind of fish. It says literally a nibbler, right? To gnaw, right? To rub, right? A kind of sish, I mean, <laughs> a kind of sea fish, my bad, <laughs> right? And to gnaw, right? And to nibble. So to gnaw, nibble, right? And munch, right? Troglodyte, cave dweller, right? So it's starting to make sense to me, fam. Especially when we got, uh, well, you'll see right now as we piece it together. But um, as all the fam keeps trying to tell you, right, the tribe keeps trying to tell you that uh, this fallen came out the water, right? And so it seems to me that these things came out the water, man. And um, after they did their little mixing and whatnot, they ran straight into these caves, man, right? Straight into these caves, right? And again, we're only digging on troglodyte, right? We're digging on troglodyte, right? Which is in the Bible, right? Genesis, right? I mean, and so on, right? Caveman, right? In very ancient time, right? The Edomites, right? Okay, and then we're talking about the common chimpanzee who still retains the name troglodyte. All right, so I'm gonna bring you guys over here into uh Job 30. You feel me? And um, we're gonna start at verse 3. All right, it says, For want and famine, they were solitary. Fleeing into the wilderness in former time, desolate in waste, who cut up mallows by the bushes and juniper roots for their meat. They were driven forth from among men. They cried after them as after a thief, to dwell in the cliffs of the valleys, in caves of the earth and of the rocks. Among the bushes they brayed, under the nettles they got they were gathered together they were children of fools yeah children of base men they were viler than the earth and now i am their song yeah i am their byword they abhor me they flee far from me and spared not to spit in my in my face. All right. So I'm going to stop right there at verse 10, right? They are children of base men. All right. 
Now, when we were digging right here, right, on the troglodyte, it said to gnaw, right? To nibble or to munch, right? To gnaw, nibble, or munch, right? There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth when ye shall see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God and you yourselves thrust out. That was uh, Luke 13, 28, right? It says the gnashing of teeth, right? The gnashing of teeth, right? Psalms 112.10 The wicked shall see it and be grieved. He shall gnash with his teeth and melt away. The desire of the wicked shall perish. Right? Remember, it means to gnaw, right? Nibble, right? Munch, right? It says the wicked shall see it. And be grieved, he shall gnash with his teeth, right? Psalms 35 16. Like the ungodly, they maliciously mocked, they gnashed their teeth at me, right? Like the ungodly, they maliciously mocked, right? It says, they gnashed their teeth at me. Right? It says the wicked plot against the righteous and gnash their teeth at them. <laughs> now that sounds like the growl of a dog, don't it, my people? When a dog growls, right? Let's see. Right? When a dog growls, right? And they snarl, and it's a gnashing of teeth, right? Wolf, right? Well, you the wolf, right? See? The gnashing of teeth, right? says the wicked plot against the righteous and gnash their teeth at them. All right. It says these troglodytes, right, like to gnaw, nibble, and munch, right? It's also in reference to tribes identified as living in various places, right? Cave dwellers and men, right? Right. Right. The gnashing of teeth, right? All right, so um, continuing on, fam. Right. As the Horites we saw were in a uh, seer, right? Sayer. Sayer means hairy or shaggy, right? And we know Esau was born hairy, right? It says, a patriarch of the Horites, the inhabitants of Edom before the descendants of Esau. It sounds like this, right? <laughs> right? The, uh, anyway. It says, the land of Edom, south of the Dead Sea, right? Mountain range in Edom, right? Says it's also called Mount Seir, so they have their own Seir. I mean, their own mountain, right? It says Seir formed, uh, says rough, right? 
Sare, a mountain of Idumea, right? And its aboriginal occupants. Also one in Palestine, right? It says it means Harrier up, right? Harrier up. Of the leader of the Horites, right? Sare, right? It says it's formed like 8163. 8163 is Sare, right? Except now we got kid, goat, devil, satyr, hairy, and rough, right? Harry, Harry he goat, buck, right? As a sacrificial animal. Now, this hit me right here, right? Because they used to refer to the so called Negroes as bucks, right? As bucks, right? And it says here that the buck is a sacrificial animal, right? And I mean, it seems like they've been sacrificing indigenous Negroes, right? That they categorize as bucks for their entire history of them being on our land, right? Seder, right? It says, may refer to a demon possessed goat like the swine of Gadara, right? It says, shaggy as a noun, a he goat, right? By not analogy, it says a fawn, right? A devil, a goat, right? A hairy, right? kid, rough, or satyr, right? It says he go, Hercus, right? Hertus or Hersutus, right? So let's dig on this, right? Since we were looking at that, right? Let's check this out real quick. Hersutus, right? Her Hirsutism. Um, let me see. Is this the wiki? Hey fam, this is what we're talking about. All right, so it said what it was the same as this, right? This is what we're talking about. So these are he goats, right? So here. Right, we we see it, right, and this is the first example, right, that we get, right. Now this is just what it says, right, but there's no denying that um. I mean, as we saw in the other uh, video that I got, right, with the uh, the Negroes are Indians, right, and they use this dance called buck dancing, right, and that was referred and used to describe the American Negro. Now here I'm reading buck or this he goat as a sacrificial animal. So if they gave you their name, right, and they're now walking around sacrificing you. And our ancestors were able to identify these people as the devil, right? And then they're telling you that a characteristic is a hairy, rough, he-goat, Hercus, right? Or Hersutus, right? 
and we go and we check out this hirsutis, right? And this is what we're getting, hirsutism. All right. I'm saying, fam. All right. Carry on. This is Pan. Now, remember when we were digging on the common chimpanzee, right? Pan. Pan troglodyte, right? Harry, you looking at the chimp, right? The chimp is Harry. All right. So, Pan, right? From the chimp. Pan troglodyte, right? Pan it says in religion, a mythology, Pan is the god of the wild, shepherds and flocks, right? Nature of mountain wilds and rustic music, right? It says, and companion of nymphs, right? His name originates within the ancient Greek language from the word pan, right? Meaning to pasture, right? The modern word panic is derived from the name, all right? It says he has the hind quarters, legs, and horns of a goat in the same manner as a fawn or satyr now we read over here right was it this one sorry not that one man. this one right fawn or satyr this is what the bible's talking about right and it's warning us about these people because these people are real i now you see it right there for yourself, right? It says his homeland is in Arcadia, all right? All right? And it says that uh, it is the seasons in the spring, right? So I figured why not drop this today, right? To counteract this shit, right? To awaken my people, right? If I'm talking to the nation of Israel, right? My my autochthon uh Americans, right? Alright, so uh we continue on. Now uh brother Lex Will, brother uh teach me to be priestly, right? He's been telling y'all to dig on this SLC two four A five, right? And how um its genes function is in pigmentation was discovered in the zebrafish, right? As the result of the positional cloning of the gene responsible for the golden variety of this common pet storefish, right? And it told you here that troglodyte, right, meant to gnaw and nibble. And then it told us to see trout, right? And when we got to trout, it was a kind of sea fish. Right, but then it also said that these troglodytes, right, are what? Chimps, hairy chimps, right? So, I mean, just putting two and two together, if we're talking about uh, this pan figure, right, as in the uh, Greek mythology, right? Um, I'm pretty sure Poseidon's around here somewhere, all right? Especially if we're digging in the Greek, which shouldn't be too hard for you to understand this right here, all right? The whole fish in the European ancestry and their DNA, all right? So, um, yeah, man. We digging on that right now, right? Now, um, I had to bring y'all here, fam, because I, I need you guys to understand something. As um, 
the bro getting to the root of it all has been trying to emphasize, man. This is about um, a name switch, all right? These these people, all they did was switch their entire history onto us, and we bought it, all right? We bought it like <laughs> like a five dollar discount. I mean, a five finger discount, all right? It, it doesn't make no sense. Like, really, when you really think about this, it doesn't make any sense, right? But let's dig. It says, in the English language, the word nigger is an ethnic slur, usually de directed at black people, right? It says the word originated as a neutral term referring to the people with black skin. This is some bullshit, right? Neutral term. Because who would need to be using this term if everyone's black but anyways it says as a variation of the spanish and portuguese noun negro a descendant of the latin adjective right niger they want to say niger means black and this is where i come to kill this because niger does not mean black my people and we need to really understand what's really going on all right it does not mean black. And words like Niger, nigger, nigger, Nigeria, whatever you want to use, right? Negro should no longer be incorporated into our vocabulary if we are Israel. All right? And this is why. We've been digging on Pan, right? Being a Greek god, whatever. Right, a fawn or a satyr being a devil, right? And when we're digging on the on the he goats being bucks and sacrificial animals, right? The same as Azazel, right? A goat, right? Azazel, right? A fawn, devil, hairy goat, right? A satyr, right? And these were in the same area as these Horites, right? These Horites lived in Mount Seir, right? And Mount Seir is where the, this pan figure was, right? Seir, this is what it's named after, right? So the Horite is also a, a cave dweller, right? And a troglodyte, right? And when we're digging on the troglodyte, it just so happens to be that the troglodyte also is pan and that these are also the common chimpanzee now they go around calling you monkey right well no more all right no more mild talk to people no more and when i say no more i hope everyone that's watching if you feel this video if you please drop a comment no more all right I don't want to hear this shit no more. All right. They want to tell us that Niger, right? Niger, right? Nigger, right? It's supposed to be what? Black, right? Night, right? Niger. Black right shining black right this is what they want to say right but if you really pay attention it always comes back to this right it always comes back to being evil right ill omened right and bad right always right right they want to say nigger right means black right Right, they'll say that it stems from nigger, you know, nagar, negro, right? They want to say all of this, right? We're about to squash that right now, fam. Right? This is what they want to sell you, right? But it always goes back to the bad and the evil, right? Troglodyte Niger. Alright. Says Troglodyte Niger 
or pan nigger, right? Or the anthro pop, the anthro pop pithecus, right? The anthro pop pithecus troglodytes, right? The common chimpanzee, pan troglodytes, also known as the robust chimpanzee, is a species of the great ape. This is why they keep referring to you as such, fam. This is why they say you are not human, fam. And technically, I don't believe we are. <laughs> if this is what human is. If a human is of the great ape, I don't believe we are. You are the aboriginal. Right? The indigenous, right? The autochton, right? The American, the copper colored races, right? When we were dealing with the crucibles, right? They were used for copper smelting, right? Because their original uh, vessels were made from clay, right? You get to the top, right? It says historically they were made from clay, right? So when you're looking at clay, historically you would be the copper colored races, right? Who were already originally here in America, right? They wanna call you this and then say that it means black. It does not mean black, people. You're looking at it for yourself. This is Latin. Where, where's black? I don't see black anywhere. I see a chimpanzee. And when I look at a chimpanzee, this is what I see. That's a troglodyte. Think it's a game? Look, right? Now it says troglodytes, Niger, nigger, whatever you want to say. Right? So, no more, no more Negro, no more none of that. No. That's just how I feel on the fam. Because this goes deeper than what we think. Especially for talking about scriptures. And it looks like it's ends on ends. Alright. So um I hope everybody's doing well, man. I hope all my fans doing well out there. I want to uh, share some stuff with y'all. We're going to get into these two videos, all right? And um, as we do this, right? I just want y'all to keep in mind what we learn. Keep in mind what you know about... Uh, these cave dwellers, all right? Keep in mind Job 30. All right? Keep in mind of all the stuff that you read, all right? And that I've read with you. And um, just don't be afraid to go back and, you know, Refresh your memory from part one. You'll see how this all connects, all right? So, um, yeah, without further ado, I'm going to go over here. You know, we got our fair use in. I'm going to uh, clip our music there. And, um, 
make sure you know we all good fair use right alright fam so uh let's get into it So, uh, yeah, that was basically like the little warm up, alright? Because the one we're going to get into is the heavier. But I want you to basically see that uh, this is the homeland, right? Now, that's interesting because, really quick, when you do the etymology right when it comes to the etymology on uh, African when you dig on it right it uh, um, where is it this one funny though because <laughs> you get pan <laughs> um what I was looking for though more specifically though was something else let's see if we can get it real quick African uh, origin right You know what? It's not going to give me what I was searching for. Sorry about that. It's because normally when you're digging on the etymology for Africa, it uh, it always wants to give you uh, Tunisia, right? And I never understood why, but now I see it. All right, so um, yeah, my fault for that, fam. We're gonna uh, get right into the next one. All right, let's go. from all around Europe to discover this country with me. So come with us to an amazing job. Hello, this is Sydney Happy. Uh, I'm off to Tunisia today. And I'm really excited to just visit that. Tunisia is a so. Shenini, which is another city, 
and we are really in a desert place. I love the long empty roads, nothing around. Yeah, it looks like it's yeah. in Utah. There's just a lot of flat plateaus, but really huge steep mountains all around us. For this magic world over there. There is a lot of places very nice in Chinese, but the best place to see this mosque, look at that. His name is Seven Slipper Mosque. Yes. Why Seven Slipper? Uh, there is a, a Berber story about there is a seven people, they, they, they stay sleeping there, the Seven Slipper people, more than 308 years. So the legends say that. After 308 years inside, it will be biggest than in a normal man and will be like that. So this, there is, is supposed to be like five meter mm -hmm. long man inside his grave. grave. Yes, that's crazy. Yes. Hmm? No, no, So, uh, just so they know, <laughs> you feel me? As you saw there, right? I mean, they was dropping uh, the drop, right? We was talking about uh, giants and caves, and I know you saw the different caverns. So, uh, yeah, it's just something to think about, especially when it comes to this uh, nigger, negro, niger, niger description they want to throw and then try to say it means black, all right? No more. No more, fam. I hope this, uh, this video was informative and, you know, fan found it useful and um again this is part two on the neanderthal nephilim new man series um i'll be coming out with more installments you know just make sure you guys do your part continue to research and uh let everybody know man as much as possible because they hitting that they hitting us from, from many different levels man many different levels and it's all complex but imagine if all of us were to you know continue to push this awareness as much as we could as strong as we could our output of information would basically it'll be triple times the amount of the one lie they have to continue to invest in Alright, so, um, yeah, all praise it to the most high, y'all, and, um, I'll be getting with y'all soon.
Make sure you uh, continue to vibrate and uh, choose up with the Creator. Turn back to the Most High. All right.